It's the Score North Twin Show. Huh? Huh? Little new, uh, huh? little new intro graphic there from our I liked it. graphic design team. I like it. Very we took nice. the we took the slogan the, the alliteration version of the slogan from one of our listeners who said, "We just want one more parade before we pass." That's what we want around here. It's not asking for too much. Okay, it's been since 1991. They checked the playoff game box. They checked the playoff series box. Let's go make it happen, guys. One more parade. Do you guys prefer uh, before I die or pass? Pass. Well, it, was alli- it was alliteration. Yeah. No, I get it. I'm just saying. Before I pass sounds much more depressing. Dying sounds so definitively. Yeah, I agree. I don't like, know. Do you There's think something passing about... sounds worse than dying. It in my it's brain, not as yes, sexy. it does. It's not as it. it it's yeah. more. It's more. It's more cutthroat of the death. And like, I pass. And it's like oh, now you're yeah. dead. You're no. You're you're, you're dead. <laughs> you're, you're, pass, yeah. you're dead. And, we can change yeah. it. We can change. I mean, this is open for. We have we have an off season to sort of figure out what, how we want to phrase it. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that pass just sounds so. It sounds so wishy washy as to the final result. So, yeah, you, so you, an, you pass to where'd you pass to? Yeah, yeah what? Yeah, what are you passing? You, you, passing? you pass. You know, you, you pass, pass out. A lot did of you pass things. on? Yeah. Did you, yeah. So in Judd's obituary, make sure it, it says dead. Like it, it, Judd's yeah. all gonna not pass oh, on. He, he's dead. He's gone. And if I get one, make sure. Here's the other thing. If you and get I'm what ser- an obituary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends on where is it is. Those some, things is there start, some doubt? They're expensive. Well, those, those things will start to be you know, really expensive. expensive. I would not yeah, blame anyone for it. not. Very I, 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 I find them to be, I, I think back in the day that they served a great purpose. I don't know they're necessary now and they're super expensive, like papers. Dude, paper. I got to say, man, we, because, uh, you know, when you when your parents die of sort of your older parents, you want to make sure that the people that knew them work with them because yeah. they read the obituaries, right? Yeah. I was like, boy, we're keeping y'all in business with my parents dying and putting Star Tribune mm-hmm. obits out there. Oh my Holy God, the Star Tribune crap. The Star Tribune. But anyway, my what I want list how I died. I hate obituaries because they never, you know, passed peacefully or suddenly. Yeah. Uh-uh. Don't I be want, vague. I don't be vague. Tell passed peacefully of, and then you list it. Or if I die suddenly, died suddenly in, you know, a, a horrific accident. I want it out there. Judd choked Judd, yeah. on a pork slider at Applebee's yeah. or Park oh, Tavern. No. no, Park Tavern. That, that'd be a Park Tavern. While after consuming a, a before I die surly bear. After a vicious battle of liver cancer, Judd passed on with a surly in his hand. Yes, you know, just exactly. That's what I want. But he maintained his weight for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just I hate, to our friends at Livia. I just I can't stand the fact that so many times uh, or or you know they're like you know. That's I. How? How'd you die? Yeah, anyway, no, I think I, you're right. I digress. Hey, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna unveil a new feature here on the Scornar Twin Show. I like this. It's gonna be called the Scornar Twin Show. Turns on the hot stove. Okay, we don't have like a sounder or anything. We can work on production. I'll, for I'll this. talk to the sound team. Okay. But we used to have a crackling back in the. Uh, yeah, but no it, one knew what it was. Bonfire. 15. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't bonfire. Have the same. Yeah. Does have the same luster. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll come up with something like uh, firing but, up a hot stove. Yeah, is there like a yeah, like a burner, something Ooh. like that, like yeah. a burner turning on. All right. Okay. And okay. so what we're gonna do is today on the Scorner Twin Show, we're gonna explore the twins' options at a certain position here. And now some of this is reckless speculation in that we don't know if the twins are gonna have interest in certain free agents yet. So we're gonna we're gonna put together some options hypothetical options and parse them apart. So today's edition of the Scorner Twin Show turns on the hot stove is going to focus on center field options under the premise that Byron Buxton is a bonus. So Byron's on the roster, underwent another surgery for the 25th straight season. We're hoping that he's healthy enough, hoping that he can contribute, right? If he can, awesome. You've got one of the best players in baseball. But I think going into this exercise and going into the season, we're assuming Byron Buxton is a bonus in the outfield. He's a bonus in the lineup. Is that fair? It's very fair. And I hope you're right. Um, If if you saw Lavelle E. Neal's column in the Star Tribune on Sunday, we're already, it sounds like, but this might be the public face. We're already like sounding optimistic that this this surgery that that he had is going to. So, but I just hope, I just hope what you just said is how internally they view things again. 
Yep, yeah, because last year it was the same thing, right? Okay, this finally this yeah. is the year he's gonna but he's gonna be healthy, but yes, we're gonna ease him in. He's gonna DH. He's not really gonna face live pitching until like the second to last week in spring training in Fort Myers. But mm-hmm. but he listen, if you get Byron Buxton back and his knee feels better than it has in six years and he can play outfield, that is a as Quasi would say a champagne problem. Okay. So I want to give you guys, and we can do this for different, we can have free agency episodes, we can do this for different different position groups, starting pitching, whatever, but today is center field. I'm going to give you three center field options, and I want you guys to tell me which one you would key in on building this roster for 2024, okay? This Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that there aren't fourth and fifth and sixth options. I'm saying for today's exercise, I don't want you to pull a Judd, which is make up your own answer, even though I'm giving you answers. Well, I think it's funny. I'm talking about. Can I I think it's funny that... That you said that this is a safe space, seeing as how the last time I was told I was entering a safe space, now I was torn to shreds out. by Uh-oh. my co-hosts. Oh, God. So, Stop trying to trade Christian Derisa, okay? Yeah. Yep, yep. So, <laughs> okay, I'll just back off here. So I'm going to give you three options. Number one, internal, Austin Martin. He was a much higher ranked and more highly touted prospect like two and three years ago than he was last year. Mm-hmm. Center field, second base. He's got major speed. He's got a career minor league on base percentage of 388, including 387 at St. Paul last year. So this guy gets on base. If you chose Austin Martin to be sort of your backup option to Byron Buxton or your primary option, A, it would be his major league debut. So there'd be some questions, right? Like he's never played major league baseball before. But B, you would have a lot more free agency money to spend elsewhere because Austin Martin makes the league minimum. Last year in St. Paul, breakout second half, uh, the power started to come around in July and August. He's not; a, he's never going to be a big-time power guy, but he gets on base, takes good at-bats. He's fast. Austin Martin. Option number two, Michael A. Taylor. He's a free agent, but obviously he likes it here based on what he said after the season. Probably would come back for something that doesn't break the bank. He's old, reliable, 32, 33 years old, really good defensive center fielder, not a great hitter, but hit 21 home runs. He could run into a, a pitch and hit it over the fence, right? And then number three is a free agent option. Kevin Kiermeyer, 33 years old. He may have had one of the best, healthiest seasons of his career last year in Toronto. He's had a lot of trouble just staying on the field. He is still one of the best defensive center fielders in the game at age 33. He was second in Major League Baseball in defensive runs saved. Michael A. Taylor was like fifth or sixth. It was a plus 18 run saved for Kiermaier, a plus five for Taylor. There's a sizable gap between as good as Taylor was defensively, Kiermaier's better. Less power than Michael A. Taylor, but Kiermaier strikes out a lot less, which helps you solve a problem, and gets on base a lot more, which helps you solve another problem. He made $9 million last year, probably costs a lot more than Michael A. Taylor on a one- or a two-year deal. And he's yes. a left-handed hitter, which you already have a bunch of left-handed hitters. Yes. So those are the three options. Parse them apart. Oh, boy. I want to, let's see, hot stove, warm up. I am going to, unfortunately, be, be incredibly boring here. I'm going to stick with the status quo, and here's why. Um, Michael A. Taylor did a fantastic job. If you, so I understand the question, so this is, let's assume that Buxton is a bonus, but also let's assume that Buxton's going to get an opportunity to prove that he can play back out there, I guess, in center field. Michael A. Taylor will be, will not cost as much as Kiermaier does. He did a fantastic job. Like he, he is what you want out there as far as he's going to go. He's going to improve your pitching staff. Kiermaier will too, but Phil, to go back to your point, about how can I maximize my free agent dollars, right? Kiermaier is going to cost more of that pool, I would think, than Taylor is. Austin Martin, in my opinion, should be a guy who you give every chance to win the former Nick Gordon role because he can play multiple spots. So Austin Martin, if he can make the the club out of spring training, awesome, for sure. Um, Perhaps he can occasionally play Center field, perhaps he can occasionally play left. He can play a bunch of different positions. But you're starting with this, a concern, and it's exa- it's spot on, that Byron Buxton might crap out again and either A, can't play, or B, has to DH again, um, which is a whole different discussion. 
My point being, I think going with Martin would, would be a little bit haughty as far as, oh, we'll be fine with him. Well, we've seen that story before, and you're not necessarily. It doesn't mean he can't play. It does mean that if you make him the center fielder in week two of April, you could be asking for problems. I don't want to pay what Kiermaier costs. I try and come to a reasonable agreement with Michael A. Taylor and bring him back because he proved that he is just, he is an excellent fit for what you want out there, which is a guy who who brings defense that is at least comparable to Buxton as opposed to, let's try Jake Cave out there. Dex? I'm going to stick with Judd here. I don't really think it, makes a ton of sense from them with them having up against you know salary problems to go out and find a different replacement for center field when it's not a problem michael a taylor was a pretty good player for you strikes out a ton but good pop and really good defense and stays in the field and that's all i can really ask for from a center fielder if austin martin if there's like a hidden gem in here great i think i think i'm also aligned with judd it's probably more of maybe he's like just your super utility guy um, and Kiermaier was able to stay healthy last year. He still proved he's a really good center fielder, but he's also 33 going on 34 years old. I'd rather take my chances with guys like Michael A. Taylor and the internal option of Austin Martin uh, before going out and replacing it with Kevin Kiermaier. So one thing Dex said was that center field is not a problem. And I would I would poke a little and say the biggest problem for the Twins offensively was striking out and just not putting the ball in play. Now, the Twins front office seems to feel differently. They seem to think it's... I think they've gone past the point of, hey, strikeouts are, aren't the biggest deal, and, and people overreact to them. It's like, well, if you set the major league record for them, and some of the teams that are advancing later in the playoffs were like way further down that list, if not some of the teams that struck out the fewest, I think th- there's some room there for your offense to get better by just extracting some of the big strikeout bats out of your lineup. Gallo's gone. He was the biggest culprit. The second biggest strikeout culprit in terms of percentage of plate appearances that ended in a strikeout was Michael A. Taylor. And he also had one of the lowest on-base percentages, maybe even the lowest. It's like in the mix for one of the lowest on-base percentages of any regular everyday player in baseball. So, God, if you you can replace those at-bats, and I get that he hit some home runs, but keeping the chains moving and keeping guys on base and avoiding striking out, to me, is a valuable thing to seek this off season. So if you can, this is where I'm torn. I think if Austin Martin were to play center field for a full season, I don't, man, this might be a take that people throw back at me, but I don't know that you would lose that much to like a 33 year old Michael A. Taylor in 2024, like defensively, I'm saying. The question is, can he come up here and hit? Julian came up right away and hit. He's not going to hit like Julian because he doesn't have the power that Julian has. But could I get away with with Austin Martin playing defense in center field, getting on base enough? He's a right-handed hitter, and then I can use that money to go make sure I've got a number two starter. Maybe I've got another right-handed bat coming in, first base or whatever. This is what's tough. Like Austin Martin helps you the most strategically because he makes less money, and you can use it somewhere else. Kiermaier's the best player of all these three, but he's a left-handed hitter too, and he would prevent you from maybe spending money elsewhere. I'd like to move off Michael A. Taylor if given these other options, but it's really hard. So here's what I will say. I would go for Kiermaier because he's the best player and then figure out, can I get another right-handed bat in here somewhere? I would figure that stuff out with my second and third moves. Now, to your point about um, the fact that Kiermaier with the Blue Jays had a healthy season he does have injury history as well right i mean michael a taylor does too i'm just so. saying i'm just saying taylor is the um if you're choosing between those two players taylor is not going to be as expensive and the other thing though is is if you go with martin and buxton can't play and you're wrong you just weakened your entire pitching staff i agree like, like so that's, you're why, taking, that's why I chose Kiermaier. <laughs> yeah, no, but but I'm, I'm saying Dude, I just have, don't you'd think... have the best defensive center fielder in the American League, and you'd have the best defensive shortstop or one of them. You'd have yeah, crazy I up think the Taylor, middle defense. I think Taylor is a very, very um, acceptable meeting point between those two, and then you know, and again, if Buxton, the the real question is, I'd love to know internally what's their expectation there. 
Like, do they think he can go out starting in spring training and play out, out there? Are they are they like we are pulling the wool over the eyes of these fans because he's not yeah. going to? Like, that's the thing we don't know because if if you're gonna if you are going to say you know what Buxton, uh, I just we've got no clue. That does change my opinion of what I might do. But if we're going to go with the 2023 plan, at least go, going in, um, I think I go for Taylor because it's not going to cost me as much. Yeah. And we we do this a lot in baseball where you like put guys at positions and say, where are they serving their purpose? Like, you know, is a classic first baseman with good pop, his gloves a little bad, but, you know, he hits fifth in your lineup and hits 30 home runs and slugs really hard. And you can, that's all you can really ask for, right? Center field, is he batting ninth? Is he playing above average defense? And is there some other thing that he can add that's that's decent? Which for Michael A. Taylor, it's pop. So can you take the lumps with strikeouts and low OBP if you're batting him ninth and he's playing exceptional defense and he has a little bit of pop in his bat? I think that's kind of where I'm aligned with this, and that's why I don't really think it's worth exploring getting rid of him. Yeah. I just looked this up on the OBP front. So he didn't qualify for the batting title. Among hitters that did qualify for the batting title, only one had a lower on base percentage, and it was Javier Baez. How, how far wow. that guy's fallen in yeah. the last few years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He had a 267 OBP to Michael A. Taylor's 278. So, like, it doesn't, the pop doesn't make up for that. He is a liability in your lineup. And so, it would be nice to replace that putrid on base percentage with someone who gets on base and keeps the chains moving. But none of these options are perfect. You know, if Kiermeyer was right handed, he would actually be perfect because he's just a better version of Michael A. Taylor. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm go- going to, to do, except the fact that the purge of uh, Joseph Gallo helps me a lot. It and does. put up yep. with Taylor. Okay. These two guys, they actually both of them in the lineup a lot at the same time. Oh, my God. Yeah. We're just looking for small Good. steps here. Small steps. Okay. So, yeah, let us know in the YouTube comment section. We're going to we're gonna play this game probably once a week minimum, maybe twice a week. Uh, between now and like the winter meeting. So let us know between those three options, Austin Martin staying with Michael A. Taylor or Kevin Kiermeyer, which would you look to put out there in center field? Kiermeyer, if I'm not mistaken, dead ringer for Kirk Cousins. He does look a little bit like Kirk Cousins. I've seen the comparison drawn between him and Kirk before. Yeah, hmm. I think so. I think a little bit, a little bit more reckless on the field than Kirk Cousins. Oh yeah, like Kiermaier. Yeah, no, he's re- he's good. Put his body on the line. He's a hell of a but, player. Now Cousins puts his body on the line by just sort of standing in the pocket. I was going to destroy. I was going to say, Kirk. You know, come on, Kirk. Kirk puts his body on the line a lot. Gets hit a lot. Ugh, ow. You know, don't put your body on the line by trying to fix your deck or build a deck without mm-hmm. the proper assistance and guidance from our friends at Ugly Deck. That is very well put because UglyDeck.com, look at that deck right there. Look at that deck. Look how happy they are. That's because UglyDeck.com offering a Reserve My Deck package now special for the DIYer who wants to build a deck in the spring. And most importantly, save huge bucks. This is for this is only for a limited amount of customers who reserve their deck package now. UglyDeck.com is offering up to $1,000 off a full deck package, plus locked in 2023 pricing. UglyDeck.com will then deliver your deck package to your driveway by May 1st of 2024. And guess what? You're going to save as much as $10,000. That's right, ten dollars on your deck wow. build. Remember, with Ugly Deck, you get free plans, a free coach. It's an Ugly Deck. It's like a, a position coach. So like a position coach is going to help you access to their online deck build academy, and they will install your footings and ledger. You do the rest and save. UglyDeck.com. Click on the Reserve My Deck Package Now button. UglyDeck.com, which really gives you a beautiful deck. Yeah. Hey, we saw a lot of hail this summer. Uh, I remember at least three hailstorms. One that had, I don't know if it was baseball-sized hail, but for sure golf balls were sitting out front of our, our patio door. So if you had hail damage and you have an approved claim, Hire a Pro is here to help you earn a profit on your hail claim, okay? So roofers, like traditional roofers, kind of hate these guys because they show you everything a roofer can't, which is the expenses and profit on your job. Roofers do this sort of behind the scenes, right? They know what materials to order, the crew to hire, how to negotiate with the insurance. Hire a pro takes care of all of this for you so you can earn a profit on a hail claim. Let them sit down with you. Again, if insurance has approved your roof replacement, give Hire a Pro a call at 651-402-3400. That's 651-402-3400. Or visit HireA.Pro. That's Hire A. 
dot pro. All right. I know Dex has to get to um, We're okay. Purple Daily on draft here. So we'll try to keep this to like a five or six minute immaculate mm-hmm. grid. See how well we do with that. Judd's going to hate this third category. There's new categories now, and I think Judd might hate it. Born outside the USA. <laughs> I love you these know what? categories. It's more creative, at least. <laughs> I like the uh, 200 career wins one now, too. Like I, they're at, yeah. And Judd, they had the one team on it the other day. Oh, yeah. Dude, we smoked that one. I saw oh, that. Did you? I yeah. forgot to send oh, you a screenshot. I we celebrated got like, it. We got like 18% on that one. I was yeah, celebrating that. They listened to Judd. Yeah, we did the tw- that was the one. The, the twins were on the grid, and they had the new categories. I'm oh wow, sure. the twins were on there too. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, here's what we're looking to do. We're looking to go nine for nine. That's how we are immaculate here. So we're looking for a brave who was a cardinal, a brave who was a pirate, and a brave who was a mariner. And then we're looking for a cardinal who hit 300 in a season, a pirate who hit 300 in a season, and a mariner who hit 300 in a season. And then we're looking for a Cardinal born outside the USA, a Pirate born outside the USA, and a Mariner born outside the USA. Nice. That's and a FYI, lot of options for that. For yeah. this category, players born in U.S. territory, so Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, are considered to be born outside the U.S., okay. so they do still so like work. Eddie Rosario, well, he doesn't because he the Braves aren't part of that. That box, but like Rosario was a Puerto Rican, right? Uh, Puerto Rican born, right? Right. So, okay, let's put uh, we'll put six minutes on the clock here and see what kind of trouble we can get into. All right. Mm-hmm. The if if we want former Twin farmhand, former Gopher between Atlanta and Pittsburgh, Denny Nagel played for both teams. Nagel's a good one. I'm gonna write some of these down. Um. Bert Brylevin was not born in the U.S., right? Wasn't he, he born was in Holland? Holland. He was born so in Holland. That's a great one, dude. For, Pirate. for Pirates, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Let's do that. Let's fire that one. Old Bert. Be, be low. Go low. Point nine. Point nine. That's beautiful. Hey, for, um, you know, me and my old school, old time and time baseball players. Huh? <laughs> see, uh, see? been waiting for this one because uh, the most famous baseball card of all time and the most valuable baseball card is Honus Wagner, right? Right. The TT06 tobacco he, card. He was a pirate. Mm-hmm. He was a pirate. And uh, he was one of those, I don't know if he ever hit 400, but he was one of those like big time hits guys from back in the day, right? Back this is before day. they hit home oh, runs pretty much. Yes, yeah, right? right? Big uh, mm-hmm. stolen base batting average guy. Mm-hmm. I would bet quite a bit that he hit over 300 in one of his, like, 20 seasons in the big leagues. I'm just throwing that out as an old-school option. Sure. Okay. Another this one. Is... Do you guys remember Craig Wilson, that sort of platoon catcher, okay. like, 20 years ago? I think that guy hit 300 one year, too. Another one that popped in for me, I hadn't played fantasy baseball in, like, 14 years. But I had Marlon Bird, and Marlon Bird had a couple weirdly, absurdly good fantasy baseball seasons because he could do a lot. He could play a lot of different positions. And that would be an incredible 300 pull for Pirate. He, he was a good... Uh, uh, I thought Marlon Bird was, a, was a Philly and a Mariner and a Brave, wasn't he? Wasn't he a Mariner? Played for a bunch Brave? of teams. Played he might have played for the Pirates, Cubs. too. Um, well, if, I like, don't remember him playing one. for the Pirates. He but, played, yeah. yeah, he played for a bunch of teams. Oh. I don't know he played for the Pirates. Oh. Adam uh, LaRoche would work for Brave Pirate, too. Also, before he went to the Mets, Jason Bay. For the Pirates. He was, yeah, he was a Pirates prospect. Yep. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of options here. I wrote down all these, by the way. So right. Adam LaRoche, Jason Bay, Marlon Bird. I'm pretty, didn't Marlon Bird play for... Uh, Seattle? Did he play for the Braves in Seattle? Am I wrong on that? Do you play for I, Seattle? You played for like a ton of NL Central teams and the. I don't Rangers. remember him as a Mariner, but Cu- yeah, I remember hmm. as a Cub and a Pirate, and hmm. I think Texas. Okay, we yeah. got a we got a bin of names there. We can go back to. Um. Okay. Well, the the Cardinal Brave. I was wrong about him MVP, but Terry Pendleton. Terry Pendleton. Well, Bruce, uh, didn't, didn't the closer Bruce Souter play for the Braves at the end? He was a Cubs close. He was. Uh, Cub, he was a Cardinal. I thought he was a Brave too. Just go, right. going, going back farther. Um, who else? Did Joe Torre play for the Braves? He played for the Cardinals. Oh wow! Uh, from Atlanta, right? Like he was born in Atlanta. Cause... Did but did he he managed him? I'm trying to remember. He oh. he managed the Cardinals too, but he definitely played for the Cardinals. I, did I he hit 300 he... for the Cardinals? Right? 
So we use Joe Torre? Joe Torre, I don't know that for sure. I mean, he's a very good player. Yeah. He, he's like an all-star, wasn't he? Yeah, he was really yeah, good. Yeah, he was really good. He was mm -hmm. a really good player. Did Okay, did John Mabry hit 300? Remember John Mabry? Oh, yeah. That, uh, he hit yeah. 300 once for the Cardinals, didn't he? I don't know. If he that. did, that's a great poll. I'm going to write him when, down. When, when, when we have a lot there. of names here. We just... Uh, M-A-B-R-Y in Ray the Langford. early 2000s. M-A-B-R-Y. Oh, Ray Lankford. Yeah, Bernard Gilkey. Oh, God, I love this. I, uh, how long did he play? I'll, yep, no, you're okay. How, <laughs> 94 how to 2007. John Mabry. I'm not super confident. I think we should go last on that square. Oh, for, you're not confident? Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure he had 300, but like... Okay, who, who do we want from... Born outside the U.S. for the Cardinals, which they've had a ton of, obviously. I mean, literally, seven, the, if you can just name, like, a backup Andres player. Andres Galarraga played for, went through St. Louis after he was in, uh, before he was in Colorado, right? And before he was in, after Montreal. Mm -hmm. um, Let's use him. Big Cat, Andres yep. Galarraga. Andres, because this is going to be such a spread out. We're going to get good percentages on pretty much all of these. Okay. Where we would fail is if we use, like, what was that? Point one. Point one. Oh yep. my God! Where we'd fail because there's so many options. Right. Don't use Roberto Clemente on the Pirates. It's like yeah. that's how you would fail this. Okay, Mariner born outside the U.S. Um, was Jose Cano. Cruz born outside? Robinson Cano. That's a popular uh, one. Beltre's popular. Nelson Cruz popular. The closer when Ichiro was there. Uh, uh, the first uh, time. Kasazaki. K yeah. Right. Kasazaki. Right. I don't know, oh, okay. Really, I think K A Z. Uh, right. Easy. And then uh, S, well, space. This guy, right? Or just Kashio Sasaki. He only played for three years. Can you just no, type in Sasaki and just see what the options are? Is that it? I think so. He was, old, he was older, right? Yeah. Kash Sasaki. Yeah, screw yep. it. be him. Come on now. Four. Ah, four. Four. Percent. That's okay. That's okay. But we could. Right. There's. But there's got to be like, you know. Oh yeah. There's tons. No question. Yeah. Right. I kind of blew that one, but that's fine. It was a All good right, one. I was. I was long. Okay. Um. Okay, we're trying to go low here. That's why we're. Did Ralphie Bell Belliard play for the Braves and? Yes, Mariners he did. Though? He played for the Braves. Do you play for the Mariners? I I I, don't I might be wrong. Play for that. the Mariners. I don't trust that. Let's go back to our bin of names here. Like, how likely is Denny Nagel to pop up for Pirates and Braves? I think he'd be very rare. I mean, that's a '90s guy. Can we do it? Let's do it. Okay, we got to check off some boxes. Sure. We got, you got other stuff to record, too. We'll sit here all day. Yep. 3%. 3%. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Shelby Miller. Yep. Oh, for That's a brave. Cardinals Braves. Braves. Cardinal. Love it. That's obscure enough, isn't it? I think oh, God, so. Yeah. Under 5%. Yeah, I think it's be... Under 5%. Yeah, 3 3%. There we go. Nice. Go oh, wrong. Don't go on that. Well... Okay, I propose two old school names again to you guys to let me know for the 300 average. So I've got John Mabry on a on a maybe. Uh, Han we've Hannes used Wagner's a great one for Pittsburgh. Hannes Wagner, and then for the Cardinal, we've used Rogers Hornsby like four other times on the grid as one of the. He's like one of the old uh, 300 hitter kind of guys from the a similar era. Yeah, that's a good. One. He hit three. He for sure hit 300. He's MVP. The question is, how many people are going to use Hannes Wagner and Rogers Hornsby in those slots? Not many. I think you're fine. Okay. Or do we go for John Mabry and see what happens? No, think, let's not. No, let's, let's, I, let's I think use you Hannes got Wagner. a sure. I think you got a sure thing. Okay, six. Six per. God dang it! What? That's it's so much higher bad. than. It. I think that's that's fine. Clement uh, would be the top one. Andy Van Slyke would have been another one too. Edmonds or Roland, did they do it? Uh, yeah, probably. Edmonds for sure hit 300. That's probably, Here, probably a here's a question for you. Keith Hernandez, who made his bones with the Mets, started with the Cardinals, bones. was co-MVP with Willie Stargell in 1979. But do, do people remember Keith Hernandez as a Cardinal? No. I would say no. Well, Cardinals fans might. Probably do. Stan Musial would work. But that's going to be He's going to be popular. Mm -hmm. He'll be real popular, won't he? Stan the man. So our options right now are Keith Hernandez, John Mabry, mm -hmm. um, uh, Rogers Hornsby. We also mentioned like Jim Edmonds. Hornsby's going to be, I mean, 
is six percent that bad? I, I mean, it'd be nice to get one that's, but well, we can like go, all I these. Mean, there, he's not going to be higher than Han. I don't think he's going to be higher than Hannes Wagner, no. is he? I try he? Hornsby. Just try Hornsby. Hornsby's also like a Cub. I think he was a White Sox too. Yeah, two, two percent. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, that's only eight percent between those two guys. Go. Uh, Brett Boone. Mm. For Boone. Brave. Nope. Three. For oh, wasn't he a Brave too? Might have been. Um, but three hundred hitter for three hundred hitter for Mariner. Oh my God, you might be right. I think he was a brave. I think he was a brave. Could use him for that square. Just trying to think mm. for a second. Was he? Am I wrong on that? Wasn't Brett? Didn't Brett Boone play for the Braves? Didn't Declan minute? get that one? Did, Dex, didn't you get that one I, time? Didn't Brett? I think you threw I up think, Brett Boone I as think a brave. It was, yeah. Because yep. I didn't remember it. That's obscure. Let's take a gamble on that. That or uh, did uh. R.A. Dickey play for the Braves because he played for yeah. Seattle before the played Twins. Played for the Mets, Seattle Mets. I don't remember him as a Brave. I think he, I think you're right. I think he came around with the Braves. So but Dickey, I'm, I'm a little more confident for whatever reason that Brett Boone played. Because Declan Braves. got this. We, we've done this before. No. I remember it. I think Brett and Boone. Aaron, Aaron didn't play for the Mariners or mm -hmm. the Braves. Aaron, Aaron played Reds for the Yankees. Yeah, the Reds and Yankees. Did. Uh, did Joey Cora ever hit 300 for the Mariners oh. in the 90s? Oh, God. You're... Uh, also, John Jose... Olerud. Olerud. Jose Cruz Jr. came up and had a, a white hot like rookie season once. Did he, Did he hit he and, 300 that year? He he and Hal McRae's kids, kid came up, and both of them were great for like two and a half years, mm -hmm. and then bang. Oh, Harold Reynolds? 300? Oh, if he hit 300. He was their leadoff guy for years, though. Olerud, I know, would have, because he's he's one of the best. Olerud, Edgar, Edgar's going to be the biggest one. Ed, Edgar's going to be high. And and John Olerud might not be as low as we want. Um, Jay Buhner? Brett Power, Boone, but... Brett Boone, like, won an MVP or close. Yeah. So we know that we know that option's in there. But I think you're right about the Braves, though. Let's try, okay, what? let's try Boone with the Braves and Mariners. Let's do it. One time. One time. I think, I think it's right. Come on. Bang! Yeah. 11. 11 oh, 11%. 11 percent. <laughs> oh my god. I thought that'd be low. All right, and then Olerud. Olerud. Yeah, that's going to be right. We could sit here all day otherwise. <sighs> Five. There it is. Hey, 35 rarity strikes. Oh my god. Play. Nice ah. job. Okay, I'm surprised by Boone for sure. I thought that... And, uh... I'm shocked by Boone being 11%. I'm, I'm also shocked by Kaz Sasaki being 4%. That surprised me. Damn. All right. So, all right, boys. Hey, that's a wrap. Scorn our twin show where we're still trying to figure out what exactly our rallying cry is. But for today, it's we just want another parade before we pass. Like, what does it mean? Like, bye, you pass. Oh, you're dead.